Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 6, 2018 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Apache today released an interesting advisory for Struts 2.3. The problem here is that this version of Struts uses an outdated version of the Commons file upload library. This component has been known to be vulnerable to a remote code execution vulnerability for about two years, but Struts 2.3 was still distributed with the outdated version of this component, making making it vulnerable to this vulnerability if you included it and if you actually took advantage of it using the standard struts to file upload mechanism. The vulnerable version is 1.3.2. The fixed version is 1.3.3. You just have to replace that particular jar file if you are still using the outdated version. And you can find links to advisories as well as to the updated version of Commons file upload in our diary. And unknown perpetrators used a number of high profile and verified stolen Twitter accounts in order to steal a good number of Bitcoins. Last time I checked, they had about 30 Bitcoins stolen. And the way it all worked is that these compromised accounts were advertising a tweet by Elon Musk or claiming to come from Elon Musk that Elon Musk would give away free Bitcoin. All you had to do is you had to verify your Bitcoin address by sending a smaller amount of Bitcoin to that address. Usually they're asking for about 0.4 to 0.6 Bitcoins, which is still a few thousand dollars. And then in return, you are supposed to get at least twice, but possibly 10 times or more the amount that you send in. Now, in order to support this scam, the perpetrators here went through quite a bit of trouble. They registered a number of domains using generic top-level domains like .fund or .plus that all started with Musk. So Musk.plus, Musk.fund. And that, of course, made the entire scam even more plausible. Also, on the page itself, it showed fake Bitcoin transactions that indicated that people that would send in money would actually get money back back. Some of the compromised Twitter accounts were also used to post fake testimonials claiming that these individuals got money back after they sent Bitcoin to this particular address. Overall, this looked like it was pretty well done and certainly took some amount of planning to set up all the domains and get a hold of all of these Twitter accounts. But a simple social engineering exploit like this still, of course, works. And researchers at Radboud University came up with interesting vulnerabilities in popular SSD drives by Crucial and Samsung that allows you to bypass the built-in hardware encryption in these devices. What essentially happens here is that typically you have to provide a passphrase in order to unlock the drive. But after you change the firmware and essentially bypass the password validation function, you can access the drive without providing the correct passphrase. This reminds me very much of vulnerabilities in cheap encrypted USB drives that often relied on client software in order to unlock the drive. And all you really had to do is send the right signal to the USB drive and it would unlock itself for you. The only way to really protect passphrases well is to encrypt them using the user provided passphrase and maybe in addition to the user provided passphrase, use things like built-in secrets that are not easily retrieved from the system. 
Samsung has released updates for its portable drives, but not for the built-in drives. For these built-in drives, you can still use software encryption, of course, to help you, but you have to be careful with Windows BitLocker. BitLocker does by default use hardware encryption if it's available, so it would rely on the flawed hardware encryption in the drive. And today, of course, on Tuesday, it's election day here in the United States. So if you're seeing anything suspicious, if you're running into any problems that are related to computer security, uh, please let us know. Yes, we have seen all the news about vulnerabilities in voting machines and the like, but at this point, haven't really seen either exploitation of these vulnerabilities or sort of any direct use of vulnerabilities in order to affect election results. So if you learn of anything, uh, please drop us a line. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.